While the uh, Expedition 40 station crew continues its uh, busy day some 260 statute miles above Earth, another crew of astronauts took space exploration below the sea, the NEMO 18 crew, Japanese astronaut Aki Hoshide, who is serving as the NEMO 18 uh, commander, and is his uh, crew, NASA astronauts Jeanette Epps and Mark Van der Heij, and uh, European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Pesquet, who are now uh, submerged underwater for their third day of its uh, nine-day underwater mission at the Aquarius Habitat that is serving as a test bed for new space tools as well as training grounds for the astronauts getting first-hand experience and knowledge working and living in an extreme environment in preparation for space flight. This morning I had a chance to go undersea and talk with one of its crew members of a NEMO 18 Aquanaut and a NASA astronaut Jeanette Epps to ask her how it's going. It's actually going really well. We spent, and now this week um, we're in mission day three of the um, of the uh, mission. And uh, yesterday I did EVA with Aki, and we had a few problems with comms, but everything seemed to work out in the end. We got a lot of good data, and we came back into the habitat and we had the experience. And so today we have Tama and Mark at, Mark outside, and um, they're in the middle of an EVA right now. Good. Oh. That sounds great. So EVA, so basically you did a scuba walk to simulate a spacewalk, what that would be like. And I know, I understand you went out um, yesterday with uh, Aki Hoshide and you guys were working on doing some drill uh, core samples. Is that correct? That is exactly right. And um, thanks for explaining the is. And so yesterday we went out and we were um, pretending that we were excavating or exploiting an asteroid. So we had a, a drill with a core on it so that we can take core samples from a mock asteroid. And we also had cutting tools so that we can um, basically take samples from the asteroid as well. So you're going underwater for nine days. Um, can you explain to me how do you feel being submerged for nine days underwater at that habitat and, and doing things like you did yesterday, the scuba walk to simulate the spacewalk, how is that preparing you to get ready for uh, space flight? Well, so I haven't flown, but I can, um, you know, in talking with Aki, our commander, um, some of the things that we experience here, for example, um, we're sat in saturation. So that means that we can't just ascend to the surface anytime we want. And that means we have too much nitrogen in our blood. So we have to basically so even go back home is one way that it's um, simulating space. But also there's six people here. And on a space station, at a given time, you'll have maximum six people right now. And so that's another way. And then, you know, we have to have things delivered to us as if we had a, a, a logistics vehicle that would deliver stuff. We have divers bring things down from the surface and um, bring them to us. So there's a lot of similarities. Also, our timeline is such that it's very similar to what we would have on a space station. And um, I'm comparing this to what um, Aki, our commander, has told us. And it's very fast-paced. Um, there's a lot going on all the time. And um, you, you're really um, doing a lot of great things, uh, especially some of the experience that we're doing, the um, EVAs, the mock spacewalks that we're doing to simulate going to an asteroid. So all the things that we're doing, everything is an experiment to further space exploration. One other thing, I'm hearing just a couple of breaks um, as we're talking, and so it just leads me to think about another um, activity I think you guys are working on is uh, how to deal with communication delays. Can you tell me how you guys are simulating that? Yes. So um, over the next few days, we haven't started yet, but in the next few days, we're going to start having a calm delay with the, with the um, top side. So what we're simulating is if you go on a mission to Mars, it's going to take a little time for that signal to get back to Earth. So how do we cope with that? Um, it seems like a simple idea. And it's um, interesting when you have a 30-second delay even. So it, it takes 30 seconds, and then when you send a message back, it takes another 30 So that's a full minute or more. So um, that time delay in um, many situations where we're either performing some kind of procedure, um, um, building some kind of piece of equipment, you know, if we're running procedures and different things like that, or even an emergency, how do we cope with um, having a time delay like that? And so developing the, the methodology to do that will help us once we um, go to Mars or even um, beyond Mars.
So um, developing a protocol for communication is very important because um, you can have um, frustrations, you can, it can even lead to miscommunication, which we want to avoid. So developing a pro protocol um, is um, a good uh, priority for us right now. What other activities are you guys working on? I understand there's some human body studies. So what are you doing to do this? Yes. So we're looking at several different things. So we're wearing these um, badges. I don't have my badge on now, but um, there's um, several different badges that look at team adhesion and cohesion and um, how we interact with each other. And so um, I'm very fortunate because I've got a good group of guys, and so it's an easy experiment for us. But it looks at proximity to each other. It looks at our heart rate. It looks at um, there's other studies that look at the um, hormones that we produce when we're in a a tense of uh, different um, experiments where we're playing sort of a game, and it looks at our hormones before and after. There's another study that looks at how our inner ear stability is affected. Um, so we there's uh, several other um, techniques we're looking at where we can wear certain types of um, monitors. So we're um, looking at many different ways for our health and human performance as well. So. All of it seems to work together in a human being that's going to be deployed into space, as well as some of the tools that we use on the um, surface if we ever go to an asteroid, um, Mars, or the moon. So we're going to do this right now.